G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Today I'm looking at the Free Sky Variometer Sensor, or Vario as people in the know tend to call these things, because Variometer is far too big a mouthful to be spewing out every five minutes when you're trying to talk to people, so it's, we'll call it a Vario. And this is a really cool little device. I really like this device. It works so damn well, and it, it has a lot of features that you wouldn't get in other Varios, because for a start, it's got the smart bus connectors on this side here. You see we've got two smart bus connectors, so we can actually daisy chain it. it means we can have a lead coming in that goes out to our receiver and then another lead that goes off to another sensor. So that's why you've got two of them. So you can have just have one in and one out. That's brilliant. That works really well. But also, I remember I mentioned some time ago, or not some time ago, but in the video I did on sensors that FreeSky's done two generations of different sensors. There was the old ones that needed a hub and then there was the new ones that don't need a hub. And I'll show you one of the, with the older ones, here we go. Here's a, one of the connectors for, this is the old GPS sensor. Here we go, the old one. And you can see it says up and I've got Velcro on the back. But this is the old sensor and it has a different connector because what you can do with this, it's brilliant. You can actually use this as a mini, mini hub. So you can plug in the old sensors into the end here. So if it's all focused, you can plug your old sensors into there and that will give you the ability to provide a kind of a bridge between the old and the new. So if you buy this new variometer, you can use your old, some of your old version one telemetry sensors. It's, I mean, that's, I mean, the oh, Fresco could have just said, oh, damn you, you know, go and buy new ones. But they didn't. They said, here you go. You can use your old ones by plugging them into the side of this. Oh, that is really customer-focused thinking from Fresco. That's why they've become so successful, I think. They do look at what customers want, and they produce products that fit that need. That's really, really important. So there you go. That's what the Vario looks like. I've already put some Velcro on the back because I've been using this in my Cloud Surfer. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how I set up the transmitter, my Tyrannus transmitter, to work with this Vario because it'll show you how simple this whole damn free sky telemetry thing is. Let's switch over to the transmitter and I'll show you what I've done. So here's my Tyrannus. It is one of the very first that ever came off the production line. They sent it to me for review. It's actually the first one I ever, I bought another one subsequent, but this was the first one and it's just been working. I mean, I haven't even updated the software because why do I need to? It does everything I want to do. There's, there's nothing in there that needs updating as far as I'm concerned. And so I'll turn it on. Ta-da. Here we go. So you can see how old it is. And also it doesn't have that seductive voice and it has the old flash screen because it's really version, I don't know what version I haven't looked, but it's old, old software and it works. But let's say you want to set up a Vario with your Tyrannus. What are you going to do? Well, obviously there's a couple of things you have to do. First thing, let's go into the menu and let's go back to the telemetry screen. Okay, and we'll go down here. Where's my little thing to try and get my thing out of the way of the camera. If we go down here, we've got Variometer. Here we go. And I'll just move down a bit further so it scrolls up. Source, Vario. Vario. I mean, that makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> so the source for the Variometer will be the Vario. You could, I think you can use the GPS as well. I'm not sure. I haven't tried, but Vario is the one you want to use. GPS is too inaccurate as far as altitude goes. It really is. It can be meters and meters out. This is much better. Vario. Then we've got the range on which the tones operate. So if the craft is neither sinking nor rising, there'll be no tone. But if it starts to sink or rise at more than 0 0.05 meters per second, so obviously on this side we've got sink rate, on here we've got rise rate, if that exceeds 0 0.5 meters per second, then the tones will start on your Tyrannus, it'll start beeping. It gives an interrupted tone if you're going up and a solid tone if you're going down. And of course you put a ceiling on that, the maximum is 10 meters. So if it gets to 10 meters, rise or fall, then the tone is not going to change after that because if you're honestly 10 meters of lift or 10 meters of sink is a lot. So there's no point in knowing it's more than that. There you go, that's all you have to do on that screen. Now if we go back to, this is another one, custom functions. Now if you're not, if you haven't done much programming with the Tyrannus, this may seem a little bit, you know, like, oh, what's going on here? This looks a bit hard to follow, but it's not. It really isn't. Hang on, I'll just prop this up. Hopefully we'll get a better angle on that screen, as long as the studio lights don't, there we go, that should be better. Yep, there we go. Um, what I've done is I've set up three custom functions. It's really, really simple, this stuff. Don't, you know, don't be put off by it. The first custom function is connected to the SD switch, and that's labelled on the Tyrannus, so you can just flick the switch and it'll fill in that for you once you select that field. And all I've done is I say, this is the Vario. You know, so what's going to happen is when I put my SD switch up, then the Vario will be active. So the radio will give interrupted tones when the aircraft's going up, and a solid tone when it's going down, no tone if it's you know, pretty much just flying straight and level. Easy peasy, you can just follow that on your own Tyrannus if you want to. The next custom function is the is set up so that it will just enunciate the altitude every, in this case, 10 seconds. You can change that, it can be 5 seconds, 10 seconds, 20 seconds. So when I throw my SD switch to the down position, it's a 3 position switch, so if I throw it from the top position to the, to the lowest position, then 
the little lady inside my Tyrannus will regularly remind me of my altitude. She'll tell me what my altitude is so I don't have to keep looking at the screen. It'll just be a friendly reminder. But I mean, a lot of the time, I don't want someone nagging me. And so I will have the switch in the middle, the SD switch in the middle, in which case it will otherwise be silent unless, because there is a third custom function here. Notice custom function three, and I've got CS1. And CS1 is a, um, it's a virtual switch. I'll show you that in just a moment. But when CS1 is on, when it's like having a switch called CS1, when you flick the CS1 switch, but this gets done automatically, then it will, again, play the value of your altitude. So it will enunciate the altitude you're at. And you might think, well, hang on, you've done that up here. Why do you want another one? Well, the reason for that is that if the SD switch is a, a off, you know, it'll, you can operate that manually. But this one operates automatically because this is going to be my alarm for when I go too high. Here in New Zealand and in a few other countries, there's a limit to the maximum altitude you're supposed to fly a model here in New Zealand. It's 122 metres, I think, which is about 400 feet. So if you get to 122 metres, you should stop climbing because you're breaking the law. And that's why I have an alarm on here. And again, it tells me every, once I reach that altitude, it'll keep telling me every 10 seconds what my altitude is until I drop below the 122 meters or whatever I've set it at. Because I'm going to show you what I've done here. Let's go back to the previous screen. Custom switches. That's that CS1 I was talking about. Here it is. CS1. And it says A greater than X. Well, here we get into some algebra here, getting maths. And don't glaze over. Don't glaze over. Stay with me if you can. We've got two variables here, A and X, and in the next two columns we define what those variables are. So in this case A is the altitude, and X is a number I've put in there which is 118 metres. So what's going to happen here is this custom switch, which is actually just a, an imaginary switch, it will switch on whenever A is greater than X, or whenever the altitude is greater than 118 metres. So if I'm climbing up and my aircraft reaches 118 metres, suddenly on that other page it'll Turn on the line here, the custom function 3, because CS1 will have happened, and it will then tell me my altitude. So if I climb up to 118 metres, then the lady inside my Tyrannus will say altitude 118 metres, or maybe 119 metres, depends how fast I climb, because remember, this data is sent back every now and then. It's not continuous, it's that there's a, a certain amount of delay depending on the you know, timing sequence and so forth. So she may miss a few metres and may say, you know, might not announce it. That's why I've set it to 118 and not 122. It gives me four metres of wiggle room. So there you go. It's that simple. That's, then your Vario's all go. I mean, you'll get, if you have your SD switch up, you'll get your tones. If you have your SD switch down, you'll get a constant every 10 seconds uh, enunciation of your altitude. And if you have your SD switch in the middle, then it'll be completely silent until you hit that altitude limit. So even if you don't need a Vario for thermal soaring or something like that, it can be really handy to have so that you know when you're getting close to your maximum altitude and just normal flying. And that way you're never going to break the law, break the rules, which is great. Um, so that's it. What I'm going to do in the next video is I'm going to put this in my um, cloud surfer, put this back in because I took it out to show you, put it back in the cloud surfer, we're going to go outside, we're going to fly it and you'll be able to hear the tones and see how this stuff actually works in real life as we play with the switch. So in the meantime, if you've got some questions, if you've got some comments, then please leave them in the space below the video provided by YouTube for that purpose and I will do my best to answer or address them. In the meantime, thank you for watching, it's time for me to get back to the bench. Bye for now.